felt a cleaving in my mind, as if my brain had split. I tried to match it seam by seam, but could not make them fit. The thought behind, I strove to join unto the thought before. But sequence raveled out of sound, like balls upon a floor. The teenage brain. By the second decade of life, the human brain is full size. It's billions of neurons all in place. But it is not yet finished. The brain is a work in progress, and adolescence is the last great time of enormous brain change and brain development. Now the drama of brain development focuses on the part of the brain that makes us uniquely human still maturing prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is a part of the brain that allows us to make future plans and that's involved in such highly abstract areas as personal responsibility, morality, and self-control. This part of the brain is undergoing this major, major step in maturation during adolescence. With the part of the brain responsible for reason, judgment, and self-discipline still developing, it is no wonder that the teenage years can be a time of turmoil and confusion. The adolescent's brain is clumsy because all of a sudden there's these new parts of their brain that are online that are doing tasks and they're getting used to it. They are trying to figure out, okay, I've got a frontal cortex, what do I do with it? The developing teenage brain is in flux shaping personality, behavior, even identity itself. As the brain matures, the teenager also faces special risks, from addictive drugs and alcohol that can hijack the brain to the chaos of schizophrenia that strikes most often during adolescence. Sometimes the teenage brain fails in ways that challenge even our most advanced understanding of how it works. Two years ago, Courtney Hale Cook was a senior in high school when he was struck by schizophrenia, a brain disease to which adolescents are particularly vulnerable. You know, I spent, up to that point, I had spent 19 years, you know, with virtually the same personality and I was very accustomed to it, and I liked it. I liked being me, you know? And all of a sudden, it was taken away. He would come up to me, and he would say, Mom, you look like a really old lady today. And he said, he would point to my eyes, and he'd say, you have a black hole here and a black hole there. Or he would describe things as going into tunnel vision so that everything else is black, except what was in that small tunnel at the end. When he would open his eyes in the morning, he would see gnats, he would see sparkles, not even with the first thought of the day, just the minute the eyes were open, he would have all these visual disturbances. But they're, they're usually in, in the very uh, center of my vision. Uh, uh, but it, it varies, uh, like, like now they're kind of just wherever I see the sky, uh, you know, they're, they're still there. I think it took him a number of weeks to come to me and say, you know, Mom, I've seen this in psych class, and Mom, I'm really, I'm really terrified, I'm really scared that I have schizophrenia. I felt like I was going crazy, and, uh, you know, I felt like I'm going to be crazy for the rest of my life. 
It's hard for me to imagine a disease that is crueler than schizophrenia. I mean, when does it begin? You know, in late adolescence and early 20s, just when a family and society have their maximal investment in a young person, just when, you know, they're about to graduate high school or college, and this child is lost in the most awful way. At the University of Iowa, Courtney is part of a research study that is investigating how schizophrenic brains function and malfunction. We'll put the on. Schizophrenia is as complex as the brain itself, and clues to its biology have been stubbornly elusive. Schizophrenia is definitely an enigma. It's never been possible to identify an obvious disease-related feature that distinguishes schizophrenia from all other conditions. You look at a brain of a patient with schizophrenia under a microscope, you don't see anything that would make you say, aha, this is a disorder of these cells or those cells. What has gone wrong inside the brain of someone suffering from schizophrenia? For centuries, the answer has eluded researchers. But new imaging technologies have revealed how the brain fails to function properly. Focusing attention on several different brain regions that are underperforming. Regions responsible for thinking and reasoning, memory, and emotion. The fact that so many regions are malfunctioning has led researchers to investigate a part of the brain which coordinates their operation, the prefrontal cortex. There's certainly a lot of evidence that the prefrontal cortex functions like the conductor in an orchestra, and that it maintains harmony, and it makes music out of many, many disparate elements of this orchestration. Uh, and that we think that part of the problem when the frontal cortex is deficient, as it may be in schizophrenia, is that instead of music, there's noise. One of the things that happened to me was that I was constantly, like, stupefied. And uh, I do have a little bit of trouble uh, uh, staying coherent, uh, staying uh, to one particular subject. Uh, you know, because my mind is somewhere else. This time I want you to tell me the color of the ink. Ignore what the word says and tell me the ink. Red, blue, brown, okay? Right. As quickly as you can. Ready? Go. Red, blue, brown, red, green, blue, brown, brown. A uh, poorly functioning blue, prefrontal red, cortex blue, red, makes green, thinking difficult. Brown. It is no surprise that many people with schizophrenia don't perform well on a series of tests designed to measure their ability to think and reason clearly. Courtney was once a good student, but as the disease progressed, his grades began to drop, and he finally had to put off plans for college. Schizophrenia is a disease that affects the highest human functions, the parts of us that are most evolutionarily advanced. Our ability to think at high conceptual levels. Scientists had once hoped that MRI images of the brain would help solve the mysteries of schizophrenia by identifying damage to specific brain structures. Instead, the images revealed a new mystery. We were surprised to see that there was no obvious hole in the head. But what there was was that the ventricles of the brain, which are these centers in the brain that have spinal fluid, water in them, that are just cavities, were slightly bigger in patients with schizophrenia. Why were the ventricles, reservoirs of fluid that cushion the brain's delicate tissue, 